The Systems Engineering Building is P&L's first facility where we are taking multiple mission needs from across the department and putting all our staff into this building to look at how we can change the way we see the grid, but also make our entire P&L campus a living showcase with new technologies, demonstrate the value and the return on investment so others can duplicate what we're doing here. The grid itself, it's the most complex machine ever been made by human beings. They require a lot of computing power to analyze a lot of the aspect of the power grid. We be able to determine the capacity of the transmission lines in a few minutes versus the current practices that do that every few months. Means we'll minimize outages, blackouts uh, in the power grid. How do we secure the nation's electric grid? It's mostly owned by private industry. One of the things that really gives us an edge here at PNL is our ability to work with electric utilities and private industry in a shared trust relationship. What this means is we're able to actually have live telemetry coming in from electric utilities and it informs the researchers so well to be able to use real data. A lot of the problems that grid operators have today is when things occur, they can only have a limited picture of what's going on in their part of the system. Having a better wide area view of what's going on in other parts of the system around them allows them to make better operational decisions. So we call this wide area situational awareness and we're working on technologies to enhance that for the grid operators. But as a national laboratory, we are chartered to be looking over the horizon past today's challenges to anticipate what are tomorrow's challenges and opportunities as a nation. Renewables are wonderful resources, but they produce power in a very intermittent fashion. And that means that we need to make sure that we are controlling the power grid in a way that still ensures performance and stability. When we look at distributed energy resources, say battery storage, for example, one of the questions is, uh, when should I charge? When should I discharge? When should I just sit there and do nothing? And to do that, you need information about both the state of the electric power system, the state of the battery system, and the um, economics of the electric power system. We believe that the future of the system will look very much like the transactive control and coordination concept that PNNL first developed and piloted with Bonneville Power Administration. Incentive signals or price signals will we'll move uh, throughout all of the grid uh, asking for different devices and systems to take actions. We are providing part of the tools that will enable us to a transition for the power grid from a traditional operation where all the controls were done on the generation side, so controlling a few thousands of uh, generation nodes, to controlling also the load side, where we have hundreds uh, of millions of uh, end-user devices, each producing uh, data every second. So the real key of making this happen is that it's got to be seamless and automatic. Individual people are not going to spend their day saying, how can I help the grid out? It's going to have to be done in the machines, in the buildings, uh, they have to be smart enough to understand how to react and respond and earn incentives in the process. Once you have that degree of control, uh, you, you can achieve much greater efficiency within the building, but you can also now engage all of those devices with the larger energy system, the grid in this case. We'll be using this building that we just moved into as a test bed for some of those control strategies. We've added extra instrumentation and we're adding some uh, Voltron platforms that will enable us to both collect data from the building as well as insert uh, control commands into the building. Really fundamentally what we at PNNL have done the last 30 years and what we're doing now and going forward into the future is looking at how to measure the grid in real time, how to pull all that data in and turn that data into useful information that utility operators and others can use to optimize and then ultimately control the real-time operations of the grid end to end. And if we can do that, you know, over the next decade by putting all these different technologies in our high-performance computing, um, I truly believe we'll optimize the grid and create a strong, resilient U.S. grid for the future.